Get ready to go grab your favorite coat and grab your potential arms tight. It's time for the Bruce Beard Podcast. Now that you're a little of sneaking, kicking, and done. A man sat in his living room watching television and he heard a click clack click clack coming from his window. He got up to investigate, but there was no one there, so he went back and sat down. And he came up again click clack click clack. He went and investigated again, saw nobody there. He was now starting to panic and, and worry. He went back and sat down and it began yet again. Click clack, click clack. Not being able to take it anymore, he went outside. He saw no man, but a tree with its branch tapping against the window gently. So he went and broke off the ends of the branch. He came back and sat down inside to watch TV. And the noises never came back. Mother told me, never go in the basement, but I wanted to see what was making that noise. It kind of sounded like a puppy, and I wanted to see the puppy. So I opened the basement door and tiptoed down a bit. I looked, I didn't see a puppy, but before I made it to the bottom of the stairs, Mother yanked me out of the basement and yelled at me. Mother had never yelled at me before. It made me sad, and I cried. Then Mommy told me never, never go in the basement again. And she gave me a cookie. That made me feel better, so I didn't ask her why the boy in the basement sounded like a puppy. (laughs) Sarah sat out on her porch, watching the world go by, relaxing with a nice calming glass of wine. She watched as neighborhood children drove by, The milkman made his rounds. She felt the gentle lap, lap, lap at her feet as her dog sat diligently next to her on the porch and licked at her ankle. Then she remembered she didn't have a dog and she looked down and saw some guy who just liked to do that a lot. (laughs) I finally found my husband, the kidney, which he needed so desperately. It took forever to track down everyone he had donated organs to after the crash. (laughs) My mother always told me to stay out of the basement. So I was very interested when I kept hearing sounds coming from the basement that sounded like a puppy. I was very curious to go down into the basement and see what it was, for I always wanted a puppy. So I opened the door, stood at the top of the stairs, and looked down. And my mom yanked me back out, out of the basement, and told me never to go to the basement again, and gave me a cookie. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I began tucking my young son into bed, and he tells me, Mommy, tuck for monsters under my bed. I go to look underneath for his amusement, and all I see is his father's secret gay lover. (laughs) Hey everyone, this is the Booze and Spirits podcast. We have not done a format change, it's just our April Fool's episode. (laughs) We're the, the only podcast that thinks that it's funny to increase our production values for April Fool's Day. (laughs) I'm Nick McDonald. I'm Kate McDonald. I apologize to everyone that's still listening to us. (laughs) We entertain ourselves. That is 90% of the goal right And at least four people on Twitter. (laughs) All right. Um, So this is our April Fool's Day episode. We got April Fool's stories, something-ish. You got a drink? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. We'll wing it. We gave the option in the last episode. We let Amanda from Spook Eats decide 
whether we were going to do a April Fool's episode or a WrestleMania episode. She picked April Fool's. Bet she's regretting that now. Here we go again on my own. Sean just got home. The derp. He got out of my lap, though, so. (laughs) The dog, she means. The dog got out of my lap. The dog got out of my lap. The 95-pound lap dog. Are you derping? Are you derping real hard? Is dad home? Dad's home? There he is? There he is? (laughs) I guess, well, let's address April Fool's Day. How's that sound? Before we get into the stories. I mean, I don't traditionally participate in April Fool because, for one, I'm pretty... You got a one-year-old? Well, I have the, I have the petty, and all the things I want to do <laughs> are real, real bad. So, I just it's just best if I don't partake. <laughs> so, April Fool's Day, if you weren't aware, and I imagine most of our listeners are, is another Christian ruining of a pagan holiday. See, so yeah, I wasn't aware. Weren't you? No. I mean, I know of, like, traditional Celtic-esque... Traditional Celtic-esque traditions, that's what I was going to say. Well, it runs in with Ishtar and the beginning of the pagan calendar, but because the Christians didn't want people celebrating pagan holidays, but also knew they couldn't just take these festivals away from everybody, they changed it to April Fool's Day, because you're a fool if you think the calendar starts in April... I believe is the idea. Okay. I may have just got that from The Simpsons, but uh, it it ties in with Ishtar and and Aries season and all those other things. Okay. I'll believe you. I didn't fact check this. I didn't fact check it either, but it sounds good, doesn't it? I just liked, let me find, there was a good Scottish name for the holiday. (laughs) McDonald Day? (laughs) No. uh, The, uh, the... Clan Donald's not really known for being fools. They're just known for being very, very aggressive. Not us. Last I checked. (laughs) Hold on. I realize, for anyone that watched the video for the last episode with Spook Eats, the weird faces I make are because there's like a dog tromping down the hallway outside of the room I'm recording in. I apologize. And the weird faces I make are because I suddenly realized I was on video. I was like, oh, is this the appropriate face? Maybe I should... Nope, that was worse. Let's uh, let's not be conscious of that. <laughs> We're not real good, goodly known for our photogenicness. No. Okay. In Scotland, April Fool's Day was traditionally called Huntagok Day. Because Huntagok? Gok. G-N-W-K. Huntagok. Is a Scots... Vo- for a cuckoo or a foolish person, hunt a gawk day. Hunt a gawk. I used to hunt a gawk at the bars when I was single. That's different. Hunt a gawk. But with different letters. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and I'm guessing that's all you need to know about April Fools because I haven't looked into it real close. This Should is we? what we have to Should offer. Should we? Should we what? Look into what it really is. Oh, I mean, I'm on Wikipedia. I mean, I can consult oh. the Oracle. Are you consulting the Oracle? Or There's so many the words. We're both consulting the Oracle. Who wants to be the voice of reason this time? I don't know that like, Canterbury Tales has gotten involved at this point. Oh, shit. And Heath in, didn't Heath Ledger play... Uh, the Gawk? The no. <laughs> the guy who tells the Canterbury Tales. Or No, he was just... He wasn't that guy. Was Which movie are you talking about? A Knight's Tale. Like... What's his oh. name? Or if the Canterbury Tales was one of the characters. Oh, I mean, I had such a hard time watching A Knight's Tale. I've seen probably most of the movie in the last, how long has it been out? 20-ish years? But not all in one setting? I've seen it once, and not shortly the music, after it came out. but The music really bothers me. It's like Moulin Rouge. Oh, is I it? I want to like it, but the music really bothers me. I don't remember that. Well, they use, like, We Will Rock You and stuff oh, like, that's during right. one of the chow scenes. Oh, I forgot scenes. about that bullshit. Oh, God, but, no. But then there's Keith Ledger in... I feel bad that we A it suit up of now. armor. Yeah. I feel bad that we brought that up. That shouldn't yeah. be relived by anybody. Uh, yeah, I just don't get it. No, oh, God, I logged on to History Channel's fucking website. It's the, it's the angel fire of cable network websites. There's so many words... Uh, in Lebanon, April Fool's prank is revealed by saying, 
it just gives me the phrase in Lebanese, which I, in no way, shape, or form, can pronounce. The Julian and Hindu calendars both began the new year on the spring equinox around April 1st, but when they changed to the Gregorian in 1582, that's when the beginning of the year came to January. So, yeah, so it was the butt of the joke being that, oh, these people are still celebrating the new year in April. Oh, look at you, not just straight making shit up this time. Oh, in theory. Well, yeah, I mean... I'm not I like from the it. Simpsons. It's got to be accurate, right? In Spanish-speaking countries, they call it Dia de los Santos Innocentes. Yeah. Holy Innocence Day. Mm-hmm. But it's celebrated in late December. Well, apparently this was... Uh, or on but, January 10th for East Syrians, which I don't... I did not know Syria was a Spanish-speaking country, Wikipedia. I'm done. I'm done with Wikipedia for the moment. You're out. Or, well, it, apparently the big switch over to the Gregorian was uh, pushed by the French, so... They would have the they would pull pranks on the people who are still using April as the beginning of the year, including having paper fish placed on their backs and being referred to as Poisson d'Avril, uh, April fish, to symbolize a young, easily caught fish or a gullible person. And then the next section is says is uh, subtitled Hilaria. I'm guessing that's about Alec Baldwin's wife. And her it was an April Fool's Day prank that she is from Spain. But she that's, fucking she pushed it for years. That's dedication to the art, is what that is. That's it's really it's not that she was lying to people. She just really got in it. <laughs> April Fool's Day prank. That's right. <laughs> in the 1990s, the sitcom Roseanne featured an episode titled "April Fool's Day," but it was about tax day, so that's funny. Huh. Let's try to think what the great April Fool's jokes are. I mean, there was the one where South Park was going to reveal who Cartman's father was, and instead they played a whole episode about Terrence and Philip. And then Cartman's father was his mother, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Mrs. Cartman is Eric Cartman's dad. I forgot about it. You spoiled the 24-year-old show. I did. Boy, we're pointing it today with our 90s cultural references to South Park and A Knight's Tale and The Simpsons. I mean, I feel like I need to go take a <laughs> shot of alcohol. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, in 26- hey, who likes Gogurt and Lisa Frank peaches, huh? I mean, Lisa Frank is back with a vengeance, so <laughs> make a note. <laughs> Gen Z is all about that 90s stuff. Like, it's so hard for me God to, like, watch them. my co-workers' kids come in to, to, like, see them wearing shit I wore as a kid. <laughs> I'm like, I think I have that same bucket hat. <laughs> And then they make fun of my skinny jeans and my side part. Apparently, that's a thing. There's a whole, a whole thing. I don't, I don't think it's okay. a whole thing. That's fine. Know. You know what? Because the millennials came in and told all the boomers and Gen Xers they did everything wrong, and they thought that, you know, no, we know how to do it right. And now they're all upset that the Gen Z wants to tell them they were doing things wrong. It's like, welcome to the club, pal. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that as someone that lived through wearing jinkos. Specifically, I wore men's jinkos because they had bigger legs. Did you? Yeah, at one point in time, like if I could find them small enough for me. I mean, to I had some wide leg jeans, but I never had jinko wide legs. I was double zero then. <laughs> but so, so they might not have been jinkos. They could have just been any old pants. No, they were they were jinkos. Like I worked very hard to get jinkos, okay. and then I would walk around in my jinkos in Oregon in the cold months. So like. I would wear jinkos and most of the time flip flops in November. <laughs> my legs would be drenched up to like my thighs. Yeah. So I'm good with you know the fact that my skinny jeans don't get wet unless I fall in a puddle. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh, I wanted to read this. In 2016, April Fool's Day, Pornhub changed its name to Cornhub and displayed suggestive videos featuring corn. <laughs> The site used a similar prank for 2018's April Fool's Day, this time changing its name to Hornhub, and displaying videos about women blowing horns instead of pornography. (laughs) One of my favorites was The Zone, the alt-rock radio station out of Victoria, D.C. They did a April Fool's prank where they were changing to a country format. So so the DJ started playing country songs for for about a half hour. No. That's not even fucking funny, because <laughs> there used to be an amazing alternative rock station out of Vancouver, B.C., XFM, uh, and they got bought out by the Clear Channel. So one day, I turned it on, 
back in the day when I listened to the radio, so we're talking like 2005 probably, <laughs> everything was gone. <laughs> All that was there was fucking elevator music. I get it. I had, in Roseburg, I had a talk radio station I really liked, and one day out of blue, it just changed its format. I'm like, where, where are my shows? Can't Where's you? my Art Bell? Can you at least tell me? Tell me you're going to fuck my <laughs> life? <sighs> All right, should we get into some stories? Stories? I don't know. Some, well, not those, not those stories, some real ghost stories. Some, some April Fool stories, since we're not doing WrestleMania stories. Well, I mean, mine, I wouldn't say falls as ghost stories, but, you know, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. I, it, didn't go, it didn't go the route I planned, but I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but it's not a wrestling story. I mean, I could make it into one, I'm sure. Okay, well. It does take place in South America, so it might be a luchador. Ew. All right, I'll start with my trickster story. Evan Lewis was recognized as the first American heavyweight wrestling champion on March 2nd, 1893. He created the championship by unifying the American Catches Catch Can Championship with the American Greco-Roman Heavyweight Championship, defeating Ernest Rober in three out of five falls match with alternating Greco-Roman match and catch-as-catch-can matches in New Orleans, Louisiana. I thought yours he held wasn't the title a wrestling for over two years. story. <laughs> Evan Lewis is credited with perfecting the stranglehold, or neck yoke, what modern wrestling fans would know as the sleeper hold. Evan Lewis's father is, was a farmer named John Lewis. John died in 1884, but the tale was so harrowing that details of his death continued to be retold and shared, even so far as being published in the New York Times as late as 1902. John Lewis was described as, quote, a man of sober life and undaunted courage, end quote. One night he stayed out late to help a neighbor with some butchering. He decided to take a shortcut home, cutting through several fields. At one point he had to climb over a stone wall, and upon getting to the other side, witnessed a figure appear as though it had gathered itself out of thin air and stood watching him in a menacing manner. John tried to run, but the creature lifted its arm in the air and, pulling a full carry white, tossed the farmer into the air like he had been picked up by a small hurricane. The next morning, a neighbor found Lewis back on the other side of the stone fence, semi-conscious. He was carried home but died a few hours later, asserting even to his final breath that something supernatural brought about his end. So, the route Lewis took was a 25-mile stretch of what is now Route 151 in Wisconsin, and at the time was a military road between Dodgeville and Blue Mounds, nicknamed Ridge Road, and infamous as the domain of the Ridgeway Ghost. So infamous is this ghost that by 1943, folklorists had collected several hundred tales attributed to this ghost. Reports of the ghost go back to the 1840s, and as recently as 1993, Supposedly, starting back in the 1850s, the ghost has a cycle of escalation and relaxation that peaks every 40 years or so. According to legend, this ghost can change its appearance at will. Witnesses have reported it appearing as a young woman, an old woman, a man with a whip, a headless horseman, all manner of animals, domestic and wild, and even a ball of fire. It often chases or attacks witnesses, but then suddenly disappears before the victim can fully understand what's happening. I got a list of recorded sightings here. One, let's start here. A strange creature that appeared on top of a stove in an inn near Ridgeway. That's all the details there is of that, but I imagine some kind of impish thing. A farmer went out to his pump one evening to collect two pails of water. He pumped the water, collected it, and walked back to his cabin. At the door, he looked back to see the pump handle pumping all by itself and water pouring out onto the ground. Farmer quickly hurried inside and locked all his doors. Like a chicken. <laughs> like a little bitch. Another young farmer went out to hunt small game and returned that evening as the mist began to roll in. On his path, he saw a mysterious white object moving in a threatening manner. Well aware of the stories of the Ridgeway ghost, he quickly raised his shotgun and fired on the object to new effect. The farmer managed to reload and fire again, but still nothing. As the object began to move towards him, he dropped his firearm and game bag and ran away from the scene. A man walking along a road west of Ridgeway looked back to notice he was being followed by a hazy figure. Knowing the legend of the ghost, he decided to quicken his pace. As he looked back, hoping to lose the figure, he saw that it had begun to quicken its pace as well. The man decided to move faster, breaking into a dog trot, only to have the figure again match his pace. 
This continued to build until eventually the man was in a dead run, with the ghost continuing to follow him. Try as he might, the man couldn't lose the ghost and eventually ran himself to exhaustion and sat upon a log. The ghost continued running up to the man, sat beside him on the log, and said, Boy, that was some good running you were doing. <laughs> this is a real reported story. I'm not making this up, all right? <laughs> There's no postscript to that. That's where the story ends. Just... <laughs> yeah, got some good running. Yeah. Just some ghost fuckery. That's where that stops. So what you're telling me is you think we'd get along with this ghost. Possibly. A teamster transporting a wagon of pig lead knew that he would have to pass the notorious Ridgeway area and decided to stop off at a saloon in Ginny Town to soak up some liquid courage before he proceeded. When he left the establishment, he found his oxen had been hitched to the wrong side of the wagon and saw a ghostly figure running away with the teamster's lantern and a whip in hand. The teamster decided instead to spend the night in Ginny Town. <laughs> Two men from Pokerville were walking the road with a plank or rail carried between them. As they passed a thicket, the bushes parted and a figure dressed all in white hopped out, landing perfectly on the rail and balancing. The figure then began to whip at them with a switch, and the two men ran, still holding the rail between them. In case this wasn't Scooby-Doo enough, the white figure continued to balance as they ran, switching them the whole way. <laughs> and they finally worked up the proper combination of sense and exhaustion to drop the rail, they saw the figure had mysteriously vanished. It went off the rail on a crazy train. <laughs> Regional folklore holds that the Ridgeway ghost was born of a combination of deaths from two brothers in the 1840s. Ridge Road was home to over a dozen saloons. Mining camps dotted the nearby countryside, and the road served as a main thoroughfare for mined lead being transported to the Galena, Illinois. As a result, Hotels, post offices, and groceries, which took the form of a combination saloon and store, popped up every three or four miles along the road to support the wagon trains and provide services and entertainment for the immigrant miners. The miners often were left with little for entertainment other than drinking and gambling, and that drew all manner of disreputable characters to the area, commonly known as Tufts. <laughs> Wait, the area is known as Tufts? No, the people were known as Tufts. Okay. Disreputable character. Okay, just... Known as Tufts. Well, I mean, that's what I gathered, but it was so dumb that I was hoping I heard it wrong. It's, it's entirely fair. <laughs> hey, hey, you Tufts, you calm down. We ain't, we ain't gonna have that here. <laughs> Don't make me get the ghost. My ghost can be a pure ghost. Fights, knifings, and shootings soon became commonplace and even daily occurrences. Justice was slow in the area, and the most common punishment became whipping. In fact, it is often suggested that the ghost was invented as a tale to scare the locals into staying home after nightfall, because, indeed, after his arrival, few people dared to venture out after night, and wagon trains made it a practice to hire armed escorts when passing through the area. I like, also been suggested... I was going to say I prefer when my escorts are armed. It's like a two-for-one <laughs> deal there. <laughs> it's also been suggested that many of the ghost's activities... Could have been practical jokers trying to further secure the legend of the ghost in the public's mind. Back to the genesis of the ghost, though. The brothers, aged 14 and 15, were at one of these mini saloons the night they met their fate. One of these regular fights broke out, and the brothers got themselves involved. During the fray, one brother found himself tossed into the fireplace where he burned to death. Panicked, the other escaped the establishment and ran out into the night, but ultimately froze to death before he could find his way to safety. The first reported occurrence of the ghost is attributed to Dr. Cutler of Dodgeville. So, Cutler was known as a bit of a drinker, but he swore sobriety on the night in question. I know a family of Cutlers. I mean, like, their mom's maiden was Cutler. And they're a family of drinkers, is all. Well. Right. It checks out. It checks out. <laughs> as he passed the home of the dead brothers by wagon one night, he felt unease, like a dark presence was sitting next to him on the wagon seat. Suddenly, a figure appeared on the wagon pole, a long pole attaching the wagon to the yoke. The figure whipped at him repeatedly. And so this guy's balancing on this pole, much like the uh, one on the rail was earlier. The figure whipped at him repeatedly, and the doctor sped the horses trying to shake him off unsuccessfully till the figure just suddenly vanished as quickly as he had appeared. So the town of Ridgeway burnt down entirely in 1910. <laughs> Some say the ghost moved to the nearby Mineral Point. Others say that it stayed in the area. Today, both Mineral Point and the village of Ridgeway, which is uh, part of the town of Ridgeway, are big proponents of celebrating their ghostly heritage. 
Mineral Point celebrates Ghost Days every year, and Ridgeway celebrates their ghosts during Halloween and Labor Day events. Ridgeway proudly displays the motto, Home of the Famous Ghost, and uh, on their website they have a representation of the town's police uniform sporting a ghost on the department patch. I couldn't get confirmation if that's the actual department patch, but I really hope it is. I really want to go to something called Ghost Days. <laughs> that's not all? So that was my non-wrestling ghost story. <laughs> good talk. Good talk. That's some good running. That's some good running, my friend. <laughs> On that note of Ghost Days, my spirit box came, and I'm really excited, and I'm trying to figure out where to go play with it at. Yeah, get yeah. Sean or Mom or someone to go with you so you can do the Estes method. Um, well, Bird wants to go. Oh, there you go. And she'll be way more excited to go than Sean, so... I'm sure. <laughs> and Mom won't want to stay up that late if we do a nighttime thing, so... That seems likely. Because Sean angrily yelled at me the other day. I, don't I, like, sent him, I think, an Instagram post, and he was like, you're not bringing creepy fucking haunted dolls into this house. And I'm like, what if it's, like, when we have a bigger house, and I just have, like, a room, and we just have a few haunted things in the room, and he just looks at me, he's like, we are not the Warrens, you need to calm down. Yeah, that seems like a problem. So, you said tricksters, and, like, you already had a trickster in mind, and I just was like, I'm going to look at fucking trickster spirit, thinking, you know. And you came back with 75 myths about coyote. Yeah, no. Uh, you love coyote, <laughs> though. What's the, uh, what's the spider? Ekteme? That's not right. It's something like that. Which, which spider? The native spider yeah, or the African spider? Yeah, the, I was leaning towards the, I think it's not. It's, the, the native one is Itome, isn't it? Itome, yeah. The, I don't remember if that's Lakota or Navajo. I think it's Lakota. But mostly I was just making a Kimmy Schmidt reference with that one. Uh, so, well, I started looking into trickster spirits, and then I found one I felt obligated to discuss. I couldn't find, so unfortunately I couldn't find any specific current stories about this one. Do you remember, there was a video that came out of, I believe, I don't know if it was Brazil, but it was South America, of a dwarf. You motherfucker. A dwarf, like... Yes, I remember this fucking thing. Throwing, it terrified me. Th throwing rocks at children, and he, like, yes. walked with a limp, and, like... Yes! Okay, we're going to find the video, because I think it needs to go Fuck. on the things. I can be in charge of that if you need to sleep tonight. I'm well on record for hating fucking crazy, creepy Latin American dwarves and all sorts of duende. Nick hates Latin American dwarves, but he loves Lucha Libre wrestling. This doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Kidding. It's a joke. They're just <laughs> short, usually. Anyway. I don't mind the ones that come out in the open. It's the fucking duende fey folk that hide in the bushes and pop out. No bueno. There was, there was hand gestures. You guys can't see at home. Sorry. Summarize the McDonald family. We don't deal with the Fae. We <laughs> respect the Fae. We stay away from the Fae unless you are Nick's daughter, who will occasionally ask Gangi how to get help with attracting fairies, and we just we just let those two do their thing, and we don't get involved. I get involved. <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I get text messages from friends saying. What can we offer the tooth fairy besides teeth? Long story. Me being like, I can tell you this, but I don't want to. <laughs> Ow. You offer them your neighbor's teeth. That's what you offer. You, Theo? you stay the fuck away. Theo just like stomped my bingo arm somehow. Your bingo arm? The like squishy, squishy back of the arm fat. <laughs> like the bingo lady wing. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Arm. Okay. I never heard it called bingo arm. I get it. I understand it. He just, like, somehow stomped on that, like, soft, tender, tender meat bits there when he jumped off the couch, <laughs> and it was very uncomfortable. Anyway, okay, back on track. Arm. Those are not fairy wings, they're big arms. <laughs> that wings? But, yeah. Okay, anyway. So I found a trickster spirit that, uh, we're moving into uh, some Portuguese words here, so bear with me. I did I did look them up. I'm trying to say them properly. I'm probably still going to fuck it up because this is who I am as a person. And as previously <laughs> discussed, I have an incredibly high palate, and I can't make a lot of noises. 
get uh, Uncle Alio on the line and have him pronounce it for us. He'll just light things on fire. That's fun, too. It, it is. <laughs> so, I found the Brazilian trickster spirit, the Saucy. This is spelled S-A-C-I. Um, and then there's there's three forms of Saucy. <laughs> In case you need different kinds. <laughs> I am not going to say these right at all because I did not look up these words and I apologize. But there's Sassi Pereira, Sassi Trique, and Sassi Secura, which are kind of different levels of trickstering. Like the Sassi Secura, like, it's the red-eyed, more aggressive one. Makes sense. Different levels of saucy. Different level. He's the sauciest of the saucies. So, <laughs> the saucy, by legend, is a... Dark-skinned youngster male in Brazilian folklore. He's typically either black or biracial, which I'm sure if we were to fully analyze this folklore from a 2021 setting, there's probably a lot of racism going on in this spirit, and I apologize. This is not why I'm talking about him. I'm talking about him because he is a one-legged dwarf that smokes a pipe and wears a red magic cap. <laughs> and when I learned David about... David the Gnome. He's David the Gnome. But, like, one-legged, angry David the Gnome. But, based on Nick's PTSD from that angry dwarf throwing rocks in South America video, <laughs> I had to go with this story. So, he smokes the pipe, got a magical red cap. Our episodes are just evolving into, you know, how much can we fuck with the other person, which... Yeah. You know what? I don't know. We ask you what you want to hear, and you don't tell us, so we're just going to fuck with each other. (laughs) So, he can disappear and reappear wherever he wishes. He typically does this in the form of a dust devil. In most parts of Brazil, he's considered just a prankster, but in other parts, he's potentially dangerous and malicious creature. He has been known to grant wishes if you can capture him or steal his hat. There is a caveat. (laughs) If you steal his hat, apparently it smells terrible, and you will never get the smell off if you touch his hat. So he's got a piss hat. Yeah, I guess. (laughs) So, turns out he's just like a weird, crazy hobo that grants wishes with one leg and a pipe. All right, well, I understand that. Yeah. That makes sense to me. That wish is he <laughs> buys liquor for underage children. <laughs> no? No? Okay. <laughs> so he is blamed for a lot of very interesting things. He is known to hide things around the house. I did read some places if you leave him like offerings, your things may come back. He sets farm animals loose. He teases dogs. Curses chicken eggs. So they either don't hatch or you can't crack them. I read it both ways. He spills salt, sours milk, burns stew, and drops flies in the soup. He makes it so popcorn kernels don't pop. So he is anti-David the Gnome, because normally you'd have a house gnome that helps with these kind of things, and he's just flipping all that on its head. He does things like dull seamstresses needles, hide thimbles, tangle threads. He turns nails point up. So basically, anything that goes wrong in or around the house was the fucking saucy. He's the reason that Apple made the AirPods, because he kept tangling up the cord. Yeah. Um, he's going to kick back on that, or...? He's probably tangled up in the cord stuff, or I don't know. <laughs> um, he can turn himself into the Matip Bere. Now, I don't know why I said that like as a French, but it's an elusive bird whose song comes <laughs> from nowhere. You can escape the saucy by crossing a moving body of water. Yeah. Because he'll lose all his powers. You can also tie a bunch of knots in a rope and drop it. He's compelled to undo the knot. <laughs> uh, and then, like, for offerings, like I said, he likes uh, tobacco. Who doesn't? And he likes kachaku, which is that, like, Brazilian, it's essentially rum. It's like a cane sugar alcohol. Again, who doesn't? I just appreciate that he's, you know, got, like, the vampiric OCD where... You know, there's uh, there's something that you can throw out that he just is obsessed with yeah. taking care of. Um, I did read that the easiest way to catch him is when he is in dust devil form. You can catch him in a jar. I like that. That's that's uh, that's the easiest is to catch a dust devil in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's exceedingly nimble. Even though he is missing a leg, he can ride a horse bareback. <laughs> 
typically sitting cross-legged which, <gasps> while smoking his pipe. How can you be cross-legged when you only have one leg? I don't know. This is what the internet tells me. Every dust devil in Brazil is caused by him. And there's more than... cross my leg is lost. Wow. That was aggressive. There's a whole, like, flock of saucy. So, like, if you piss him off, he'll bring in his friends. That doesn't seem fair. You can throw a rosary into the dust devil. All of the, the prayer beads need to have been separately blessed. Or you can catch him with a sieve. That doesn't even make sense. How do you catch a dust devil with a sieve? <laughs> Use the sieve on the mason jar. I don't know. Well, so you're supposed to use is, dark glass. Oh, this is some hipster backwoods yeah. gnome catching. But his cap is the source of his power, so if you get that, you really got him, minus that smell. Well, I'm assuming if he's a dust devil, I mean, does a dust devil have, like, a cap on top of it? Like, some kind of Mario I, Odyssey I don't character? Know. That, is Mario a saucy? He's got a red that cap. Fucker. He's short. He's he has both legs, short. though. Maybe he's a half saucy, half saucy, half Italian. Uh, well, have we ever have we ever seen his legs, or is he always in overalls? Has he ever worn shorts? I mean, that's true. Maybe he has a good prosthetic because he does hop around a lot. <laughs> anyway, the saucy does have comparisons to the jinn of Middle Eastern culture. Oh, it's not bad enough. He's a fae. He's well, also yeah, a fae energy. You can he's use. Apparently, you can use a magically marked cork to force him into your jar and grant wishes. My cork says menage a trois. Is that? That was not the markings of which they spoke. There is yeah. uh, some idea, though, that he, this legend made it to Brazil during the, the Muslim War takeover, which was yeah. Oh, like, okay, that makes that so, really makes sense. Well, the the Muslim War takeover of Portugal. Well, yeah. So so it it, it travels with the Moor to Portugal, Portuguese and then to Brazil, with yeah. Portuguese to Brazil. I hate how much sense that makes. Sorry. Well, and I did find out, like, I was pretty intrigued looking when I was researching him. I found some other, essentially, cryptids of Brazilian mythology, Brazilian folklore, Brazilian. We haven't caught one yet. <laughs> and, I mean, besides, like, Chupacabra, they also have, like, Brazilian werewolf legends and a lot what I would consider more European legends. You know the gals from his Spooky Tales listen to our podcast, so if you fuck up anything South or Central. American I mean, I would like them <laughs> to not come for me with a knife. I'm trying to learn here. They can come for me. Come for me with some facts. <laughs> That's what I meant. I didn't mean they were going to like... You insinuated they had razor blades in their hair. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck did I <laughs> My whiskey kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> was that too much? That was too much. <laughs> no, I think they'll appreciate that. If anything. <laughs> Yeah, so back to, but there is a lot of crossover in in ideas that I thought were more European-based. I mean, El Chupacabra, like, is obviously not a European thing, but, like, werewolves, I figured that was much more of a European idea. It is. I mean, it's kind I mean, of, there, it, it came to the Americas with, and I do you know, think the there French is particularly, some, like, but apparently simil- the, you know, some similar people. Native Amer- American elements to the werewolf, but you know, oh, just, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know there was Brazilian werewolves. Let me see if I can find that list because I enjoyed it. There's a headless mule in Brazil. That's Bottlefoot, who's kind of he has various descriptions. I'm not even going to try to pronounce these Portuguese names because I'll just make it worse. Sometimes he's a bear-like creature. Sometimes he's a horse-like creature. Sometimes it, he is like a centaur. Is is Bottlefoot like Edward Forty Hands? Is that what? <laughs> If you catch him, you gotta drink yeah. up the bottle. But so I, I, he grants you a stinky. I wish. could not find any like recent, like your story of the saucy, like specifically doing things other than putting nails face up and making my popcorn not pop like a fuck. But I still, um, <laughs> I still, I'm wondering now if saucy is the limpy dwarf from the video. Could be. I don't like it. Pretty sure he had a gnome hat. Yeah, too, like I feel like he had right. like a, a slightly pointy hat. I don't think you could make out the color. Well, it was but... nighttime, so we don't know it wasn't red. This I'm in it. We're going to use the scientific method here, and Fuck we're not trying to prove ourselves right. We're just this. showing we can't prove ourselves wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, confirmed. Mythbusters confirmed. My Mythbusters fan fiction is off the chain. <laughs> it's real racy. If 
it's a fan fiction and it doesn't have a homoerotic element to it. It's There's a lot of beard fiction. stroking that happens in my Mythbusters fan fiction. <laughs> Mustaches entwined together. Please note, I didn't sleep at all last night. <laughs> You're gonna sleep tonight. Well, I'm I didn't sleep last night because of the screaming child, so I'm just delirious. You're not gonna sleep tonight because you're gonna think there's a little dwarf throwing rocks at you. I'm gonna have dreams about dwarves and Jamie Hind and then making out with Adam Savage. So, did you make a April Fool's tricksterish drink for us? I mean, I didn't make a drink. I stole some drinks. Oh, okay. So, I was thinking we would go with a drink I found that I really think sounds amazing. It's called Sex in a Dumpster. <laughs> it's a shot of warm Jaeger. Yuck. And you serve it in a hollowed out cabbage. <laughs> like, how do you hollow it out? Like, how do you hollow it out? you, like, cut it in half and then hollow it out? I mean, what? that's how I picture it. I couldn't find an okay. example. I mean, we could also go with... Is that it? That's the whole drink? Is I mean, you could put a, a shot of Jaeger in a cabbage? You could put a little warm Jaeger. You could put a little mayo in there if you really want to spice things up, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we could also, I guess, we could go with another drink, the Nicholas Angel. Okay. So that's, you're going to get a glass. Uh, um, you're going to get some, some ice. I think crushed would work best for this. And peculiar for a cocktail. Yeah. I mean, just and go with your favorite glass. I would say anything from 12 to 16 ounces would work well for this. Smaller is probably not going to cut it. And then we're going to fill that to the top with cranberry juice cocktail. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> so, yeah. Or you could mix them together and have sex with Nicholas Angel in a dumpster, I guess. That's... This is what we're offering. Today. He wanted to have sex in an incredibly uncomfortable place. Like the back of a, like back a of Volkswagen? Volkswagen? Yeah. I like that we both stuttered on that. Well, because we both neither, were debating. Neither one of us could deliver it properly. Well, because we were both debating between going between the back of a Volkswagen or what the original joke was, which was in a dumpster. dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just slurring my words. That's why I stuttered. Slurring. Oh. Slurring. <laughs> that. I was also thinking of this drink that's uh, it's a shot of whiskey, a shot of vodka, um, get some lager beer, and then a hard cider yeah. called the Tub Thumper. <laughs> you'll get knocked down, but you'll get up again. This has been our last ever April Fool's episode. <laughs> well, I mean, and then there's also... <sighs> So hard seltzers are really popular, but they're just, you know, they're not really my thing. So maybe we do a soft seltzer where we mix, like, a LaCroix, and I think a citrus would be best for this. So, like, maybe grapefruit LaCroix with, like, just a bottle of O'Doul's. What? <laughs> then you have a soft seltzer. No? No. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so I was having a hard time committing to a real drink She's for this episode. Words. Um, but I did found out my little, you my little Brazilian out. dwarf, he has a drink. Oh, no. Yeah, no, there is a, there's a drink in Brazil that I... For the saucy bitch? Please tell me it's called the saucy bitch. Well, our version is. <laughs> so it's uh, called the saucy or the saucy Pereira, and it's essentially, it's like the Brazilian version of a hot toddy, but I found no evidence it's actually served hot. I didn't find any evidence it served ice either, but it is the saucy. And you found no evidence it was served, but... <laughs> You've upset Theo. He's now growling and forking at the window. Can you... Yeah, I'm sure. It's... Hey, 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 oi, oi, oi. It's a public road, sir. <laughs> People are allowed there. So, essentially, the, uh, the saucy is... Kuchaka mixed with honey, and I found evidence that it's usually mixed with honey and lime juice, and it's kind of used as like a cold medicine, like a hot toddy would be in not Brazil. So I think we're going to do a saucy bitch, right. and I think, sh I think that saucy bitch is going to have some kuchaka and some honey, and I don't know, I kind of want to infuse this honey. With yeah. maybe some cinnamon and peppers. You're not going to infuse it with something stinky? 
<laughs> no, because um, okay. I drink all of these drinks. Oh, okay. Like I, I quality test the shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna go get some weird fish or what's that terrible fruit from Southeast Asia? A durian fruit. A durian, yeah. I'm not gonna put a durian in there. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think I'm going to just gonna we're gonna dress it up a little bit. I haven't tried this yet because I just right. found out about this drink right before we started recording. Oh well, all right. Surprise! I wasn't prepared. We all look forward to that. <laughs> all right. I guess that takes us to the end of this episode. We stumbled through that as best we can. We'll shoot it for the next episode. I hobbled one-leggedly through that episode. I'll have you know. <laughs> but I have a red hat. I have a, I have a burgundy Carhartt beanie. Will that count? I can smash you across the knee like Tanya Hardy and then uh, nice and hobble. I have enough problems. I hobble plenty on my own. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? So, I don't know. Well, let's see. The next episode... Arbor uh, Day. Well, originally I had it on my calendar to be Easter, but apparently Easter is the same weekend as April Fool's Day. Yeah, no, Easter's on Dad's birthday this year. Yeah, I know. I, I screwed that up somehow. Like, I thought it was later. So, we've kind of worn out our Easter welcome with this episode. So, I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Our two most popular episodes are the ones where we talked about the Warrens and we talked about Lizzo. So apparently all of our listeners are star fuckers, so we can do celebrities. Celebrity ghosts? Yep. Celebrity or hauntings? Ghosts, haunting ghosts, celebrities ghosts that or... haunt celebrities? Yeah, something like that. Unless you got another idea. I mean, I was thinking what's close to our, well, that could be, like Arbor Day, we could do like nature spirits, but uh, celebrity ghosts would probably get us more listeners. Probably. Especially if we find we care about that? celebrity ghosts with big boobies. <laughs> <laughs> big celebrity ghosts. Come to a town near you, big celebrity ghosts. Look at what they can do. I can't I'm going to cut me off. <laughs> I'm just going to see how long it goes, honestly. All right. I could have kept going, but I really wanted to cut off. I want someone to stop me, please <laughs> save me from myself. I'm not that person. I'm working. <laughs> I'm trying to work through my savior complex, okay? Yeah. Can't help you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Check out our show notes. We will have, if nothing else, we'll have a link to Kate's horrible fucking Brazilian gnome. We can the, the find YouTube the video. video I feel like the last time oh. I tried to find it, I couldn't find it. Well, I'm sure we'll find it. but Unless it was a mass hallucination. And by mass, I mean just you and I sharing brain. No, oh, because that thing fucking terrifies still terrifies me. Years later, it still terrifies me. People remember, because I showed it to them, about how much that thing terrified me. Our show notes will also have links to all our socials, links to the various ways you can support us, Patreon or T Public or Anchor. Or just tell us we look pretty. That's that's funny, especially. I mean, you look really nice today. Your hair is extra shiny. Whatever. We'll take the compliments. <laughs> I can't see the razor in there at all. <laughs> I'm getting good. I'm getting good at hiding it. <laughs> show notes, like I said, will have links to all our socials, has links to ways you can support the podcast, uh, has links to our website, and... It'll have uh, the saucy bitch, whatever I fully decide that drink is. And, and if you think I'm not putting all those other recipes on there, you're out of your mind, because I absolutely am. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure if I don't put the mayo in the sex in the dumpster, I can get Sean to drink it on camera. <laughs> well, that might be worth The mayo that. would... He won't... We're trying to find video content to do. I, I think that might be that. The, I mean, he won't do it with the mayo. He hates mayo, but... Cabbage and warm Jaeger. But, yes, the man has a Jaeger tattoo. I, I've, I've seen him and and one of our good male... Fr- Actually, I've seen a few of my good male friends in... a. Jaeger girl outfits at this point in my life. Not enough alcohol to erase those memories. <laughs> no, so you're living with your own <laughs> saucy dwarf problems. But he's a giant. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else we need to see? Need to say before we get out of here? That's helpful, right? Where I just make a face and yeah, put my hands helpful. up, like that's, I don't know. That plays. That plays well on audio. Yeah. Keep that up. I do what I can. I do what I Next can. episode, we'll be back to our standard format and quit trying to pretend that we're better than we are. I don't know. I might start telling all of my stories in this voice just to see what happens. <laughs> Maybe I will have 
gotten some action on my spirit box by the next time. Yeah. All right. We'll see. So I guess with that, it's time to say please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't end up our next ghost. That was the wrong voice. I'm sorry. I lost that it. That was my voice. You, did, you didn't do your voice. You did my voice. <laughs> you want me to do mom's next? From Minnesota, even though my mother's not from Minnesota. I don't think she's ever been to Minnesota. <laughs> don't end up our next ghost. You just turned into some weird European relative. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know which one. That's what, that's what I was going no for. No one in our family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye, everybody. We should get out of here. <laughs> With that, we're going to cut ourselves off. Thank you. <laughs> goodbye. Bye. <Bye-bye>. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm a delicate fucking flower. <laughs>